Well, let's get some more analysis on the cabinet shuffle. And we do have a special summer appearance of our At Issue panel. Joining us from Ottawa, senior writer for McLean's Paul Wells and HuffPost Canada's Ottawa bureau chief, Althea Raj, is here in Toronto. Paul, let's start with you. Uh, what do you think today signals to us about uh, what the Liberals are planning for the next election? This is more of a combat cabinet than it was yesterday. Um, obviously, most of the ministers don't change places. This is not a completely new situation, but this is Justin Trudeau admitting to himself that uh, hope and hard work and sunny ways have their limits, and that at some point your opponents are just going to oppose you, and uh, you're going to find yourself in a fight, especially on climate change and carbon taxes mm -hmm. and on the handling of these irregular border crossers. And so he's put uh, people in... in uh, position on both of those files, Bill Blair and Dominic LeBlanc principally, who are not afraid of a fight. And Althea, you're nodding? Yeah, uh, basically I think it's a realization that the next year is going to be a lot harder than the first years. We had liberal friendly governments, in fact li mostly liberals, uh, except for um, Rachel Notley in Alberta um, and Saskatchewan obviously not, but uh, who were on board with the Prime Minister's agenda. And now we're facing Doug Ford in Ontario, possibly François Legault in Quebec with the Quebec election in the CAC, um, maybe Jason Kenney in the spring when the uh, Albertans go to the polls. So um, the big fight is probably going to be not across the aisle with Andrew Scheer, but with uh, provincial premiers. And so he is beefing up that point with Dominic LeBlanc. Dominic LeBlanc is like elbows out type of guy. He's uh, pretty partisan. He's a savvy political actor, but he's also really charming. So it's, he's actually like the perfect person to put in this position. Um, also, basically, uh, pre-election planning in terms of, you know, the check marks on uh, the diversity folders and regionally. So uh, Mary Ng uh, in Markham, a nod to the Chinese community, typically tends to vote conservative. Uh, Philomena you know, Tassi in Hamilton, the liberals are hoping to pick up some seats there. She's Italian, also plays well with a certain community. And good communicators. So, uh, Minister Sohi, who was in infrastructure, goes to natural resources. And instead, we have um, Minister Champagne, who is a very good communicator, who's going to be out there announcing money, hoping to get money out the door. So, these are, I think, a realization that maybe they didn't have the strongest people in the right roles. So, a combat cabinet, as Paul says. Uh, Althea, what about the other side of the battle line? How's the opposition going to react to this shuffle? Well, we heard Lisa Raitt, uh, the deputy leader of the Conservatives uh, today, had a press conference and she said this is basically a desperate reset. I'm not sure that you can really say that, frankly, about the shuffle that we saw today. Most of the cabinet ministries, including people who were heavily criticized, like Catherine McKenna and Environment, uh, even Patty Haydu over the whole attestation issue, they have kept their portfolios. The only person who was really visibly demoted was Mélanie Jadid, the heritage minister, for basically putting her foot in her mouth on numerous fronts in Quebec. So. Um, I don't think it's a reset. I think the Liberal government, frankly, did not want to give the opposition ammunition on that front and kept people that maybe were not necessarily the best performers in those, in those roles because they didn't want to feel that narrative. A lot of attention today on two of the ministers in particular, Bill Blair, and, and we talked about Dominic LeBlanc here. But uh, beyond that, uh, Paul, who do you have your eye on? Um, uh, this strange musical chairs uh, arrangement where uh, Sohi, who was the, inf um, was the infrastructure minister, is now natural resources. Carr, who was the natural resources minister, is now the trade minister. And uh, Champagne, who was the trade minister, is now um, uh, infrastructure minister. It's like everyone, everyone at a dinner table moving one seat to the, to the left. Um, it may make a bit more sense than it sounds. Uh, um, uh, Champagne is a guy who loves to talk and loves to glad hand, and as Althea said, uh, he might make a bit better salesman on the uh, infrastructure front. So he is Albertan and may be better on uh, trying to get those uh, pipelines built. And, and uh, and Carr might be able to uh, sell Canada abroad better than Champagne was able to. But it's odd, this sort of musical chairs game. And Althea, you talked about a lot of cabinet ministers a moment ago, but uh, final thought on the shuffle? I think the big question mark is what Dominic LeBlanc will actually be able to accomplish. Um, Bill Blair has been like the person that made legalizing marijuana the least interesting file ever. So I think they're really trying to diffuse the whole situation with the asylum seekers. And Armajit Sohi and Natural Resources, I think everything will go well if the pipeline gets built. But if it doesn't, I'm not sure he's the best guy to fix the problem. Well, we'll know how we did tonight as soon as Rosemary tweets out her reaction. Thanks to both of you. Thanks for having us. Thanks.